Hey everybody, Skyler here, and today we're going to talk about WikiLeaks, talking about um, how Craig Wright has been a, a serial forger and a scammer, and uh, showing a bunch of proof, essentially, of how he's lied in the past. But uh, before we get started, I would just like to let everyone know that I do post about cryptocurrency um, uh, news every single day. Uh, sometimes I do coin reviews and other little videos, but I do do a, a news video at least every single day. Um, so if you are interested in the space or, um, or anything, you know, like and subscribing, all that jazz isn't a bad idea. But let's get started. So today's gonna be a little weird. I don't really know how to go about doing this. I, I actually, I, I closed. Down, I had like 30 tabs open. I closed them all down. I just started from scratch again because I, I just got stuck in a, you know, a, a, a click hurricane of, of information or whatever. So I'm just gonna go over a couple things and then, and then just give you a bunch of links and just have you go over, you know, everything yourself. I mean, this could take like an hour to go over everything, but. At any rate, so um, I just want to show. So, in, on February 11th, WikiLeaks essentially posted this, um, and they said a serial fabricator who claims to be inventor of Bitcoin, Craig S. Wright, now claims that Bitcoin was always pro-state and that he always worked for the prosecution as he tries to raise money for business projects and escape court action. So uh, he actually just recently posted um, this, and uh, and I'll uh, I'll let you write it. But he essentially uh, was saying that Bitcoin was not um, what was made for the. Well, essentially he said it was Bitcoin was made for the state. Um, so or was pro state, which you know, and obviously we know that Bitcoin wasn't meant to be that way so uh, when he ended up posting that that's when WikiLeaks ended up lashing out and started posting all these other things so uh, they posted an art so this is that an actual document uh, that that shows I'll, I'll just read it so Craig S Wright has proven to be a serial forger of documents claiming that he is the inventor of Bitcoin he has been repeatedly caught this has been uh, this has been independently verified by WikiLeaks at the time of the first uh, claim and sub uh, subsequently so this right here it shows you know uh, this is a snapshot of uh, a post he did back in 2014 this is a post he did back in 2015 and sometime between 2014 and 2015 uh, Craig went back and altered an old 2008 uh, blog post to make it seem like he was working on cryptocurrency back in 2008 so uh, this, so you know, um, uh, Web Archive. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that, but Web Archive is awesome. It just takes screenshots of the web. Uh, you can go back and see what old school, you know, MySpace looked like, or you know, all, all, all that stuff. If you have a website that went down, you can go back and see what was on it back in the day. But it's a pretty cool site. Uh, at any rate. Uh, so the screenshot they took back in 2014 said, "Tomorrow, you know, back to the DNS paper, my, stati my statistics dis dissertation and work." And then he changed it to, uh, "Tomorrow, back to the DNS paper, my statistics dissertation and work. I have cryptocurrency paper out soon. 20 years triple entry bookkeeping. PDO was good for something. BDO, sorry, was good for something." So uh, he changed his post to make it look like he was working back on cryptocurrency. Um, so I, I love these. Um, <laughs> my favorite thing about Twitter are the are the uh, <laughs> the replies for sure. But at any rate, um, so let's actually go to the next boom. So then they posted something else. And they likened him to Bernie Madoff. If, you, if any of you don't know Bernie Madoff, he made off with $60, 70000000000 billion, and it was a Ponzi scheme, the biggest Ponzi scheme ever. And that in itself is like a testimony of why we need, you know, blockchain, cryptocurrency, open ledger, you know, and people are handling billions of dollars and nobody finds out until, you know, the markets crash. 
that's pretty intense. He's actually been accused. He was accused of um, of running a Ponzi scheme many, or not many, but a couple times before. Even went to court, and the court, you know, said that he's all good, everything is fine. You know, he had well-respected people's money, um, a lot of smart people. That being said, there was uh, someone who was hired to copy his trading styles because no matter what, he was giving everybody 10%. And he went to go look at his trading styles and he was just like, none of this makes any sense. And he said like after 30 minutes, he realized it was a scam. And after like four hours, he realized it was a Ponzi scheme. Or I can't remember exactly you know what it was, but the guy spent like four hours and realized he was ripping everybody off. And then essentially told everyone that Bernie Madoff was running this Ponzi scheme. Um, and nobody listened. He said it again, again, again. I think he said it four times in the course of like eight years with proof, different proof. And everybody just, you know, didn't do anything about it and just blew him off. And then when 2008 happened, you know, the when the markets collapsed, everybody was, you know, bring, getting their money back. And then they realized there was no money and he was just running a giant Ponzi scheme. So, um, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, if you're re if you're listening to this, you knew that. But at any rate, uh, so that's pretty. It's a pretty crazy claim to be calling him the Bernie Madoff of Bitcoin. Uh, that being said, Craig Wright has been accused of lying multiple, multiple times, and you know, the WikiLeaks is a huge one to be accusing. But anyways, let's just keep going. Bernie Madoff of Bitcoin, Craig Wright who keeps forging documents to make it seem like he's the he is the Bitcoin pseudonymous inventor Satoshi Nakamoto caught again this time forging a 2001 antecedent to Nakamoto's first Bitcoin um, paper so here's a screenshot of it and here's a here's the big one here's a bigger um, size of it so essentially so here is the uh, a tweet by Craig that was tweeted on um, on the 10th of February 2019 and he was saying so we can see that Craig Wright copied the official Bitcoin white paper abstract of the October 2008 into his fake R&D paper Blacknet uh, that he supposedly wrote for, for the Australian government in 2001 However, in the scam attempt, he was not aware that Satoshi shared a draft of the Bitcoin white paper in August 2008. So you see the draft down here. As we, see, as we can see, there are plenty of corrections made in the final Bitcoin white paper compared to the draft. The fake black net paper, which should have preceded the draft by a whopping seven years, strangely also contains these same corrections. So um, it's another just... Um, in fact, there's a user who uh, said something funny. Oh, here it is. Craig Wright is so perfect. He knew the exact wording of the final 2008 white paper back in 2001, but changed it for the draft a few months earlier, then changed it back to the exact text from seven years before. What a magnificent man. <laughs> Dude, uh, I proof that he's the realest of all Satoshis. So thoughtful. He, he knew the modifications already years before they came into his mind. <laughs> Fascinatingly talented man. Oh man, that's so funny. Um, so anyways, um, Julian Assange was correct. Can you see his coincidence or not? Uh, what's this? Something that happened back in the day. Um, anyways, let's get back to on topic. Um, at any rate, so there's just a couple, um, you know, examples. In fact, uh, so here's a link to uh, GitHub, and it actually has a list of all the things that they have shown that Craig Wright has lied about. And so you can go through here and and kind of just go through um, and and you know just look through all this information yourself this could this could take a really long time so just prepare yourself um, but like you know you go through these so here is Wright's appeal to authority paper which essentially disproves its own thesis and uh, I'll, I'll link this in, into it as well but here's another one that was kind of funny so uh, Wright was caught out 
um, because his keys perpetrating from the 2008 contained a modern configuration setting which was not added to the software used in keys until 2009. In his response, he he uh, produced the appeal to authority paper which showed how a key created in 2008 can be edited to contain the configuration that wouldn't appear until 2008. One of the several problems of that paper is that Wright's 2008 keys contained the modern configuration from the moment they were created. They were never updated the way his appeal to authority paper suggests and screenshots from the paper shows this. So um, and that, as you can see, so uh, at any rate, uh, I'll, I'll link all of this below, um, and I'll I'll link to these articles as well, and, and kind of let you deep dive into all of this yourself. But you know, there's you know three things of the many that he's been caught from lying about, and and he, here here's here's the the deal with the way I stand with all this. I mean, Bitcoin's the real Bitcoin, BTC. And I don't like it when people call. I was talking to somebody about Bitcoin, um, and it wasn't until like, you know, 30, 40 back and forth of talking about crypto and what he loved about it and all this stuff and of, 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 of Bitcoin, and that all of a sudden I realized he was talking about Bitcoin Cash. And then all of a sudden I started reversing on the words that he was talking about and realized, like, I don't know, it's just really annoying. Why don't you just call it Bitcoin Cash? I understand, like, the original, you know, Bitcoin has that name behind it, but, like, you know, you can make the argument that, hey, Facebook was the first Facebook, and, I mean, I mean, MySpace was the first big, so I mean, MySpace, even Friendster was the big social, first, you know, big social media, and then MySpace, and, and then Facebook, so, you know, it took three before the, you know, the before one took over as the biggest, and they worked out all the kinks, or, or whatever you want to make, you can say the same thing with Bitcoin, like, hey, Bitcoin was the first, and it had a great, a bunch of great ideas, but, you know, Bitcoin was supposed to be used as a, um, as a, you know, payment system, as a peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, as a, you know, not as a store of value, or, you know, we, so we want to increase the block size and we, we want to make all these changes and, okay, cool, we'll call it Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Cash is the, the one that everybody, you know, let's, let's try to make it, let's, let's make that argument instead of, you know, we are the real Bitcoin and when the fork happened, you know, they forked us to be called Bitcoin Cash, but we are the real Bitcoin, so we're just going to call ourselves the real Bitcoin. So now there's three real Bitcoin. There's Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and Bitcoin. We can all talk about Bitcoin the same way, but we're, we're not talking about Bitcoin. I'm talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not real, but Bitcoin is real. So don't follow Bitcoin, but follow Bitcoin. You know, it's just like that argument is just driving everybody insane, and I don't know.